Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our Eastleigh save and look at this. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Before we get started, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you get to see us hopefully get back to the Premier League where we belong um, having been up there just for the one season. But today we're taking on Brighton. They're in third place so if we can get a win today it will be massive. Um, and uh, before that though, let's kind of show you where we've gone, what's happened, and there's been a couple of signings that I need to make you aware of. So, first up, let's look at these signings that we've made. Um, a couple of bits to show you. So, first up, let's bring these in. Were there any more outs? Um, I think there was a couple, maybe, with the likes. I mean, yeah, nothing massive. Uh, it was Nerdin Alahassan. He's left to join Aberdeen. He was one of our academy players that we brought up through. Um, sold him on for a bit of money, which is good. Lucas Gar signs another one. Went off to Luton for 240000 So, again, making a bit of money off him. Um, and Lucas Greeno, one which I wasn't sure on whether to sell or not. Um, could reach seven hundred k for him. Um, I think, ultimately, he wasn't going to be good enough for the Premier League. So... I'm kind of thinking for the future as well. Uh, and, I mean, it's good to kind of get some money in, get him out playing, all that stuff. Well, we have also signed a few players um, since we last saw each other. So the first one is Charlie Dugdale. He's coming from Celtic, um, a striker. Basically, I was mentioning how we needed another striker. We needed to look for someone to kind of fill that role. Uh, and this is the man, I feel like. Um, brought him in from Celtic. He is our record signing. But I think he looks pretty decent. Some good physicals, only 23, so plenty of room um, to develop and grow. Um, some good technique, some good determination and flair, as well as obviously the three kind of prodigies, the first touch, finishing and dribbling for a striker. Very, very nice. Um, a couple of under-21 appearances for England as well, so that's always good to see. Um, we've also brought in Tobias Cieli on loan from Real Madrid. Um, we're not looking to keep him long term. It was more just so that we could have an extra man in there. And he's also very good. So <laughs> I thought, well, we'll make the most of him whilst we've got him, that's for sure. Um, and, and just kind of use him as much as we can whilst we've got him. Again, just kind of a backup, kind of more midfielders, the better at this stage. Uh, Mehmet Esma was another one from Galatasaray we signed. He's currently in our under-23s, um, a striker. Uh, looks pretty decent. Finishing isn't great, uh, but I'm hoping that can kind of develop a bit uh, and we can get a bit more out of him, but... At this stage, still looks pretty decent um, and played a bunch of games for Galatasaray. So, I mean, he must be all right. Um, and then we've also brought in Sekhan Oza, another striker, this time from Bayern Munich. Uh, but again, not great finishing, but first touch 16, dribbling 15, some great pace as well as balance. Six foot, so he's not a small guy either. Uh, I think he could he could actually develop in something pretty tasty um and he's already been scored a couple of goals for us in in the time we've had uh and then we've also signed christian juarez um he is loaned out to middlesbrough currently he's an attacking midfielder and again those stats kind of say for themselves 19 years old already looking very very good uh, and hopefully by him playing a few games in middlesbrough he can hopefully step up when needed. We've obviously spent a total of 50 million, but also brought in 59 million. So we've kind of made a profit on the transfers wise. We're still in 37 million pounds overall bank balance um, with 2 million to spend, but obviously we're not going to be able to do that. But let's take a look. We have gone unbeaten still. Uh, we lost in the FA Cup, obviously, as I'm sure you'd expect. We played very well, though. Um, we, were, we, in fact, went 1-0 up uh, to, to start with. And, um, yeah, we performed exceedingly well. Uh, oh, no, we went 2-1 up, I think. Or 3-1, 2-1. 2-1 up at half time, I think it was. Um, but in the end, they scored in the 96th minute. Erling Haaland, not surprising. Um, but other than that, we've gone unbeaten in the league. We've only drawn two games since in the league against QPR and Palace. Otherwise, we've been smashing teams. Um, we beat Huddersfield, who are second 3-0 in the last game before the break. Um, which was great. We ha did play the um, Toby Moles testimonial against Southampton. Um, again, it's friendly because we didn't have a game that week, so I thought we might as well chuck it in there. Bonyek, a bit of a throwback for us, um, scoring the goal in that one. But we have got Brighton today, so it is a massive, massive game. Um, if we get the win, I mean, it, it gives us in such a good position to be able to actually win the league, 
which I wasn't really expecting. But um, we've got ourselves into this position, so why not? Carlos Garcia is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm terrified of us losing him um, when his loan expires. So I'm not overly excited about that. But uh, yeah, um, we have got Zach Lee, who has been fantastic at left back as well, having come up into the side. So he's... um especially since Jay hoon has been out injured for a little while. So he's been very, very good stepping up into that position. Um, otherwise, this is probably the team we'll go for to start with. Uh, Pereira in goal, Ramsey, Girk, Magoma and Lee at the back. Sieta, Ibrahim and Cieli in midfield with Anaya just in front. And then Garcia and Dugdale up top uh, causing trouble up there. Ozer's on the bench as well. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that today we can kind of use the Huddersfield win and um, use that to our advantage and just kind of plough through Brighton as well. I think it might be a little bit more challenging considering we are away from home. It's probably a bit of a derby for them as well um, as it's the South Coast. But, I mean, even a draw I'd probably be happy with considering our goal difference is so much better than theirs at this stage. Um, as long as we don't lose, we're we're in a pretty good position to be able to kind of keep going on. Um, but 10 minutes gone, and we are the one to take the first shot, which is great to see. I mean, this is a, I'm pretty sure this is a clash of kits. They're playing in their blue stripes, and we're playing in our blue and white. I don't quite understand how this has come about. But um, a ball in, Magoma manages to head clear from the Brighton delivery initially. Patterson's going to look to try and deliver again. Plays it back to Dredge, who again plays it to Patterson. We're keeping them out there, but Mad's ball in, finds hijack, not quite Girk's got in front of him jones whipped ball in into dredge and there's the goal i'm going to blame that on the fact that we've oh it looks like it's offside but i'm going to blame it on the fact that we can't tell who's who because i struggled there and i'm watching from the top i can't imagine what it's like seeing players run past you and being not sure if it's your own teammate or not um especially as their back is all blue anyway so like if they've got their back to you you have no idea it's kind of ridiculous um i, I might have to uh, I was going to say complain to the um, Football Association, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'll be able to do that in the game. Five minutes to go till half time, and Brighton are coming forward again. It's a ball in. It cleared very, very nicely. A long, long ball cleared. Um, Pembele at the back for Brighton, getting that down, playing it into Patterson, who looks over the top to Dredge, who's through on goal, cuts it across. And it's just a little tap in. It looks like it might be an own goal, in fact. Yeah, Herman Gerks unfortunately got the last touch on that one just to guide it into his own net. I think if he hadn't have got there, Gilherm Philippe would have done. So I can't blame him too much. It wasn't like a mistake. He he just had to try and get there in front of him and, and do something with it. Please don't concede again just before half time. Oh, there it is. And there's Gilherm Philippe does score that one. 2 0 in the space of two minutes. That is not a good. <laughs> that is not a good outcome. How has this happened? We were we were doing okay, and then a corner ball in. Who's marking him? Oh well, I don't know. Sieta's there, but there's two of them at the back post waiting for that header. Um, so that's not good. We're currently dropped down to second with Huddersfield going ahead us by one point. Brighton matching us on points. I mean, this is not good. This and they're coming forward once again. Three minutes. Added on. I mean, they've got about 30 seconds of that left. So I'm hoping we can deal with this. But it's a ball at the back post. And Dredge just heads over the bar. Um, Lee wasn't able to get that away. Not a great half, I'll be honest. Um, especially late on, I have to say. We didn't we didn't quite perform as we'd hoped. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we're actually going to take Amaya off, who's been very, very poor. Um, we'll bring Matteo on in that attacking midfield role. Zach Lee hasn't played fantastically. So, in fact, I will bring on Toby Amol. Um, he's been all right out there previously. Granted, that was probably like League One <laughs> the last time he's played left back for us. But why not? Let's see what he can do out there. Um, try and cause havoc, I guess. I don't know. He's, um, I'll be honest, he's getting on a little bit. Uh, him and Magoma are slowing down. Uh, now they're getting to the latter stages of their career. So we've got to use them sparingly, I guess. But Magoma's, Magoma's been good this season. I have to I mean, not this game, but this season he's been good. Uh, but I think we might have to look for another centre-half to kind of come in and be 
looking to cover that centre half spot because I mean, as I say that they again score near post Moda with the header. I was saying how I wanted us to beat Huddersfield three 0 They've absolutely beat Brighton three 0 like we did Huddersfield, uh, but Brighton's absolutely wrecked us. Anderson can come on. Sletter can go a bit further forward. And Anderson can sit in there. Not much else I can really do at this stage. Uh, maybe change it to attacking. That's maybe my only other option. But um, we're coming forward here. This is the first highlight I think we've had. So that's quite nice. Let me move the camera a little bit. Because I'm, I'm kind of like having not in the centre there. Um, ball cleared. Ramsey. No. Uh, that's going to be it's gonna be it for that highlight. Uh, be honest. Um, not great. Toby and Mole though. Come on. Here we go. We're, we're getting back in it now. Mateo. Switch it back to Magoma. Um, I'm still not impressed that we're both in blue, so I can't tell who's who. Girk with the ball again. He looks out wide to Ramsey. Ramsey's going to have to cut back to Girk again. He comes inside to Setter. Then Anderson. He's ball over the top to Ramsey, who's on that back post. A volley in. Dugdale with the header. It comes to Nieto. I, it, I mean, it's like he's got magnets in his hands, and the ball's made out of iron. I'd, is iron magnetized, the ball? I don't know. That could have made no sense if you're actually um, intelligent, unlike me. A uh, long ball by Brighton's keeper, headed away again by Girk, and we come forward once more. Cielli into Matteo. He looks through. Dugdale's not able to get onto the end of that, and it is Patterson coming away for Brighton. Dredge now looking to take on the fullback. Um, back it goes to Patterson, inside to Mad again. We've still got 28 minutes to go in the game, and um, I'll be honest. We haven't had the best opportunities as the ball gets played through for Gilherm Philippe. He just fires it into the back of the net. Paul Dredge played him through. And that's a goal for 4-0. I kind of don't want to show you any more of this game because I am i don't want us to get absolutely rattled. I mean, we've got 1.11 XG. It's, it does show that we're not finishing our dinner today. Um, and that we haven't been absolutely awful, I guess. But 4-0 is not a good scoreline against the promotion rival i mean we're six points ahead of leeds who are in fourth so we're pretty comfortable on that front and we're still in the automatic promotions i'd be fine to be honest with getting second just promotion would be great this year as it shows that we can bounce straight back up hopefully we're not a yo-yo club and we'd come straight back down but um that'd be my job to try and make sure that doesn't happen uh saying that We've got to get up there first before we can even be seen as a possible yo-yo club. Dredge, ball through, Tamer, goal. There it is again, Tamer Ozan with a ball through. A third goal of the season. That's only his third goal of the season. 5-0. Oh, I don't know. I've just gone attacking. It's just, I'm blaming. It's, it's, literally, uh, it's literally the fact because it's blue. The Both teams are in blue. That's ridiculous. That's, that's insane. I wonder how many times I've actually played Brighton on and recorded it. Because it feels like I've played them a lot thinking about it and recorded. Because I must have played them last year. I'm pretty sure I played them at the beginning of either this season or last season. So at least three times. If anyone remembers, let me know in the comments. I doubt anyone's actually watched this far into the video. But if you have, let me know. Um, <laughs> as the game ticks down, though, we're going to just come to the end of it and move on as quickly as possible from this one. Um, as they've jumped above us in the table, by the looks of it, in that last few minutes because of the goal difference, maybe. Um, yeah, look at that. Yeah, because of that, those... Oh, jeez, man. We've conceded so many goals. They closed the gap. That is ridiculous. Oh, that is so, so bad. Well, we've got to react then, don't we? I guess we've got a, um, our first defeat in how many games? That's like nearly felt like all season. Yeah, we played Brighton the first game of the season and only lost 2-1. Um, and Huddersfield, where we lost 1-0. <laughs> That's funny. But then we went on a hell of a run from drawing against West Ham all the way to the Huddersfield game. I don't even know how many games that is, but that's crazy. But we've got Barnsley up next. We've got West Brom, Reading, Sheffield Wednesday, Bristol City and Sunderland. So, I mean, we should be winning all of those. Sheffield Wednesday is probably the toughest challenge we've got as they're in the playoff spots. Um, but yeah, I would say disappointing for sure. Um, and the fact that we're now in third, 
with my hiccups, we've lost the streak we were on, being unbeaten. Um, yeah, something like 29 games, I think. Uh, why have I got hiccups? What is going on? Oh, God. Well, I'm going to leave there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Uh, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more hiccuping content like this. Um, and next episode, we'll see if we're in a spot to be able to actually get promoted or if we're going to have to play go through the playoffs again. Uh, yeah. <sighs> we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.